Do you remember in middle school when we learned that mitochondria are the powerhouse of the cell? Well, as you age, your body produces less of a peptide that tells those mitochondria how to burn fat and use energy efficiently. And MOTC might be the signal your mitochondria have been missing. But before we go any further, just a quick note. This is not medical advice. I suggest that before you put anything into your body, you consult with a licensed physician. I'm not here to tell you what to put in your body. That's between you and your doctor. But people are getting hands on this stuff anyway, so you deserve real information that you can rely on. Now, for context, studies show that MOTC can improve endurance, insulin sensitivity, and fat loss by targeting your mitochondria directly. And in this video, I'm going to walk through exactly what it is and how it works. MOTC is a 16 amino acid peptide. Most peptides come from instructions in your cell's nucleus, but MOTC comes from instructions inside your mitochondria. That's rare, and it makes this peptide very unique. You see, your body is already making this naturally during exercise and fasting. What it does is acts as a mitochondrial hormone that circulates in your bloodstream and tells your cells how to use energy. Your mitochondria are the power plants inside of your cells. They take the food you eat and convert it into usable energy called ATP. You may have heard a little bit about ATP if you've done any research on creatine. MOTC is produced in your mitochondria when your body senses it needs energy fast. This happens during exercise or when you're fasting. So when MOTC is released, it activates something called AMPK. Think of AMPK like a fuel gauge in your cells. When energy is low, AMPK turns on and tells your body to start burning fat and using glucose more efficiently. And when you activate AMPK with MOTC, the body responds as though you're in a fasted or exercise state, even if you're not. AMPK activation does three things. First, it increases how much glucose your muscles can take in. Second, it tells your body to burn stored fat for energy. And third, it signals your cells to build new, healthier mitochondria. This improves what we call metabolic flexibility, which means your body can easily switch between burning carbs and burning fat for energy, depending upon what's available. And MOTC also increases something called GLUT4 transporters. Think of these as a doorway that lets your glucose move from your blood into your muscle cells where it can be used for energy. And the key here is this happens without needing insulin, which improves how your body uses fuel during both rest and activity. And this is exactly why they call MOTC an exercise mimetic. A mimetic is something that copies or imitates. So an exercise mimetic copies what exercise does to your body at the cellular level. First, it improves insulin sensitivity. Your body can control blood sugar better and it keeps your blood glucose more stable. Second, it increases fat oxidation. It signals your body to burn stored fat for energy instead of just storing more of it. And third, it promotes mitochondrial biogenesis. And this is just a fancy way of saying it helps build new, healthier mitochondria in your cells. And these things are exactly what make MOTC different from other peptides you might have heard about. Unlike GLP and GIP drugs like semaglutide, terzepatide, or the newest retotrutide that mainly suppress your appetite and slow your stomach, MOTC actually targets energy production at the cellular level. Those drugs work by telling your brain that you're full. MOTC works by making your cells burn more fuel efficiently which is exactly why it's very common to see these stacked for research purposes. Unlike growth hormone peptides like CJC1295 or ipamorelin that pulse growth hormone, this works inside your mitochondria to improve how you burn fuel. Your body already makes this naturally. It's not a foreign substance. You're just restoring what declines with age. Because here's what happens as you age. MOTC levels actually drop about 20% in older adults compared to young adults. Middle-aged men between 45 to 55 years old have about 11% less MOTC circulating than younger men, and older men between 70 and 80 have about 21% less. This decline is linked to metabolic slowdown, insulin resistance, and lower energy levels. And using MOTC serves to restore that. 
In fact, studies showed that lower MOTC levels are associated with obesity and type 2 diabetes. Okay, let's spend some time talking about what the studies actually showed when using this drug. They actually gave this drug to mice, and what they did is they gave it to them three times a week. Those mice improved endurance, glucose tolerance, and body composition. In one study, 22-month-old mice doubled their running capacity after MOTC treatment. Long-term use in rodents improved both health span and lifespan markers. They lived better and longer. In exercise studies on young men, MOTC levels increased 12-fold in skeletal muscle mass after training. And the circulating levels in the blood also increased during and after exercise. The study showed that MOTC rose by about 50% in the bloodstream during exercise, then returned to baseline after about four hours. This drug actually increases that baseline. There was actually a phase one trial of a stabilized version called CB4211, which is a lab-made version of MOTC that a company called Cobar developed to test as a potential drug for obesity and fatty liver disease. They actually tested it in obese individuals with fatty liver. In older adults, it was well tolerated, biologically active, and showed no major safety signals. The early results also showed improvements in liver health, reduced blood glucose, and even slight weight loss in just a few weeks. So based on research, this is exactly what you can expect. In the first few hours, you'll notice improved exercise performance and energy. And within one to two weeks, you can expect better insulin sensitivity and glucose control. Within four to eight weeks, you could experience reduced fat mass, preserved muscle, and improved endurance. Now, I personally haven't used MOTC. I plan to integrate it into my research stack very soon, but I've had several clients start using it over the past few months. And what they're reporting matches what the research shows. Better endurance during training, easier fat loss while keeping muscle, and improved recovery between sessions. One thing that stands out is they're not getting the energy crashes you'd expect while on a calorie deficit. And this paired with retitrutide really seems to be a game changer when it comes to just overall fat loss and improving endurance and performance during training. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how people are actually using this. In animal research, they used five milligrams per kilogram given three times per week. And in the human phase one trials, they tested single doses in the microgram per kilogram range in older adults, which basically turned out to people taking somewhere between five and 15 milligrams per week. And they split those between three doses, either first thing in the morning or 30 minutes before their workout. So a common schedule just to make things easy is like Monday, Wednesday, and Friday before training. The clients I have who are on this are typically doing around eight to 10 milligrams per week total, and they're doing it Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and they're seeing really good results. Cycles are typically four weeks on, followed by four weeks off, just to help minimize resistance and tolerance to the drug. And beginners are typically starting somewhere around five milligrams per week split into those three doses. Then advanced users somewhere between their second or third cycle are going up to 10 or even 15 milligrams per week split across all three injections. Okay, one thing to note though, is that the protocols that I just gave you are people who are using it based upon their own research and animal studies and are basically just full sending the stuff because it works so well. So be aware that this information is anecdotal. All right, so let me give you some side effects that some people have experienced. Common side effects include injection site irritation with redness or swelling, temporary fatigue, energy swings, changes in appetite, either up or down, and mild headaches. And so some of the less common side effects or theoretical side effects include heart palpitations. And just so you know, a palpitation is when you feel your heart beating hard or fast or irregularly in your chest. You may also experience hypoglycemia if you combine this with fasting or other insulin sensitizers, sleep disturbance if you dose it late in the day, and muscle cramping possibly due to the shifts that occur in your electrolytes in your cells. And last thing to note about side effects is that the long-term effects of this drug are completely unknown in humans. Animal studies suggest it's safe, but of course we haven't been trying this stuff for long enough to really be able to evaluate what they may be. So this is gonna require further study. So if this is something you wanna research, make sure you're aware of that. 
But as far as safety is concerned, the phase one trials showed it was well tolerated in older adults with no major adverse effects. Okay, so I'm sure you're probably wondering where you can get this stuff if you wanna try it. Right now, you can get MOTC through research chemical companies, not for human consumption. But just be aware of what you're getting and make sure that if you do go that route, this is not for human consumption. These are for research purposes only, use at your own risk. Okay, so to close things out on this, as a coach for guys who wanna optimize performance and body composition, here's my honest take. I personally haven't used MOTC yet. I've had several clients integrate it into their protocols over the last few months. The results they're seeing are in line with the research. Better endurance, easier fat loss, improved recovery, and based on what I'm seeing with them and what the study shows, I'm planning to add it to my own stack and I'm excited to see what it does paired with retitrutide. So MOTC does show real promise for metabolic health and exercise capacity. But you have to understand that MOTC is a tool, not a miracle drug. If you're trying to improve your energy, your body composition, the real focus should be on building habits that scale with you over time. And this is something that I can't stress enough. Training and nutrition are the skills that let you keep muscles, stay healthy, and make the results that you get using these peptides last. The way I see it, MOTC works to enhance the work you're already doing. But a foundation absolutely has to be lifestyle, lifting, movement, and consistent nutrition. That's what will give you the results you can actually keep. So if you want help building those habits while also staying up to date on peptide research, safety protocols, and where people are finding this stuff, there's actually a link to join my free school community in the description of this video below. Inside, I share clear breakdowns of studies, practical nutrition and training strategies with resources for making all of this sustainable and easy to follow. If you want a free invite, all you have to do is just tap the link in the description, sign up for a free account on school, and we'll get you access so that you can get these resources for yourself. Last thing, do me a favor and drop your questions in the comments and subscribe to my channel for more real world insights on supplements, peptides, and proven methods to get lean and strong the right way. I hope this was valuable for you and I hope to see you next week for another Supplement Spotlight.